Hey you guys, it's Frank the Tank, and welcome to week number five of this winter league. So, um, last week we shot our first 600 in this league, finally. Uh, we shot 613 uh, using the Trend 2 and the Nuclear Cell, and um, after watching that video back, uh, I really need to get, needed to get back to practice because I noticed some things. Obviously, I was still falling off on a lot of my shots, and I noticed that that was happening because of an issue with my timing. Uh, I was getting into my slide a little too early for my swing because uh, I realized what I was what I should be doing to be able to post more shots at the foul line is that I need to slide first and deliver. Slide and deliver. Slide, deliver, if you know what I mean. Uh, I'm pretty sure that that's what Belmo does. A slide, a stop, deliver not slide and deliver at the same time so I noticed that that's what I was doing another thing that I noticed that I was doing was my uh, swing when I was getting into the top part um, I was going back to an old habit of mine that I really did not like uh, it was where um, when I was coming up to the swing I would instantly bring it up here and then go out like that uh, I was going back to that habit and I was instantly like thinking to myself, oh heck no, I am not about to go back to that. So I worked on uh, keeping my swing like that instead of bringing it up and going back like that. So keeping it like at just above the waist and down like it should be. Uh, I worked on that, uh, cleaned up my footwork a little bit, worked on my spares, um, and I also noticed that I was getting a lot of side rotation out of the ball, and a lot of the uh, track flare was going over the middle finger hole, so that made me realize I'm starting to develop that habit where I'm getting too much up the side of, ball, uh, up the, side of the ball, and I need to get more behind it. So I worked on all of that in the amount of days that I had uh, you know, for free time to be able to do this practice. I took it very seriously. And I think it's really going to show in this uh, uh, week's uh, league video. So, uh, and then, of course, as you guys can see by the title of the video, it it's not a hoax. It is for real. I'm actually going to try urethane for three games. Um, I know this is something that, that I've honestly uh, been trying to avoid. And uh, I never actually admitted it, but I think it was quite obvious to you guys that uh, I uh, would say that I'm probably going to use urethane, but then I end up not doing it because I try to avoid doing so because I don't want to because I just feel that it's not necessary. But you know what? Uh, the reason I decided on uh, doing it uh, on this night was because uh, the opportunity presented itself to me. Uh, you see, the team that we were coming up against, uh, they're just uh, a group of people who just uh, don't really care about the scores or anything like that. They're just four people who bowl and have fun and just hang out you know they treat it more like that rather than an actual league night if you know what I mean um, yeah uh, when I realized that's who we were going up against I thought perfect timing for me to be able to do this because I've also wanted to know what it's like for me to be able to use urethane in league because clearly I pres uh, I've shown you guys that I can handle using it in practice after I made that fast pitch and pitch black video and um, Obviously, uh, practice is much different than league. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you know that. Uh, when you're in practice, everything is suddenly easy, but when it comes to an, the actual league night where it really counts, things feel differently, and you feel like you're a completely different person trying to bowl, if you know what I mean. So, uh, yeah, I decided I would give it a shot, uh, partly because of the team that we were facing. I knew they wouldn't care, and I knew how they played the lanes. And partly because, uh, obviously, I was curious to see how I would do, and I know a lot of you are curious to see how I would do. So, And also, um, by doing this, I, I want to see if... Um, you know, how I would handle using this uh, urethane ball when the lanes start to change. Would I be able to handle it well, or would I fall apart? So we're going to find that out right now. And also, uh, after all of the practice uh, 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 that I you know, that I had, uh, you know, working on my release, working on my timing, working on my approach, cleaning up my footwork, all that stuff that I just mentioned to you guys. We're going to see. Did it all work? Has it all paid off? We're going to find out right now. Let's roll that clip.
Okay, everybody, here we go. Week at number five of this winter league using nothing but a urethane ball. So, as you can see, I still brought two other bowling balls with me, uh, the, the Nuclear Cell and the Rubicon. My reason, uh, because the Rubicon, I actually took it with me to practice this past week, and I actually loved the look that it was giving me. Um, so I brought it to practice. Uh, I tried it in the 10 minutes of practice, and it actually... For me, things fell apart. Like, I, I wasn't able to find the right line with it in the, the 10 minutes of practice. Uh, I kept missing left, I kept missing right, and when I missed right, it wouldn't recover. It was just a disaster, so I, I told myself immediately, okay, that Rubicon is going back in the bag. Uh, I'm not bringing it out. And then the nuclear cell, you guys know that is my ball to fall back on if things go badly with another ball that I'm using. Um, so yeah, that's uh, the reason I had to pack the nuclear cell. Uh, the pitch black, as you guys saw, uh, that's what we're going to use. But in case things fall apart, I have my nuclear cell to fall back on. So that's really uh, the reason for my three ball choices. So um, yeah, we're going with the pitch black. And based off of uh, what I remembered in practice, I lined up on board number 10. So we were going to be playing some pretty straight stuff. And uh, yeah, I, 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 that's all I could really do. Was, and I didn't even pick up that pitch black for the 10 minutes of practice. I was too busy trying to figure things out with the Rubicon and the nuclear salt because I felt it would be more important to do that because I do remember what I did in that fast pitch and pitch black video. So I felt like it wasn't necessary to pick up that pitch black during the 10 minutes. Uh, I felt like I needed to pick up that nuclear cell and Rubicon to figure things out with that in case, you know, like I said, if my if my game fell apart with the pitch black, I would have those two balls and I wouldn't have to think about, oh, what am I supposed to line up, what line am I supposed to play, things like that. So, yeah, that's what we were, that's uh, our game plan with this pitch black on the left and right lane. Lining up on 10 and trying uh, to get it where, like, not... Uh, straight up like this eight and nine board, but like at an angle, kind of like more like that. You know what I mean? Like a slow arc kind of thing, feeding it to the friction at the right moment so that it slowly curves into the pocket. If that makes any sense, that's what I was going to try to do. That's what I did in that urethane video I made, and that's what I was going to do on this lead night. So anyway, uh. Well, Right before I throw this shot, uh, that interesting stat that I mentioned to you guys was uh, the, t and this is going to show you how difficult this league is. The I was able to look at every single average uh, from every bowler in this league, and I found uh, the t I was able to figure out who the top five averages were. Uh, in as you can see there, I'm going to put it on the screen there. In fifth was me with the 193 average, and this is before this uh, week of league league night, by the way. Uh, yeah, in fifth was me with the 193. Paul Cabri had a 198. Uh, Gary Gardner, the great Gary Gardner, who had a 222 average last year in that league series that I did. He has only 199. Yikes. Um, let's see. And then in, uh, let's see, in, th yeah, Gary was in third. And then in fourth was Wayne Crane with uh, a one, no, a 201. And in the lead was Jess Salazar with the 204. But that's the most mind-boggling thing, is that only two guys out of the entire list of people in this league, only two people have a 200 average in this league. And that highest average is a 204. What? That's That goes to show you how much more difficult this house pattern is for everybody. It's quite the challenge, but mark my words, I will get back into that 200 club and I will become that high average. Mark my words. So anyways, as you guys saw with that first shot, I got it left and it went high. I ended up leaving, what I think that was the nine, picked up that spare and we got a nine spare to begin that on that left lane. And now here we go on that right lane on the same board, just like the left. Better. But the ball speed seemed a little too slow there and as a result went through the nose and now I have a split to deal with. So all I could do was go for the two, and I'm not going to lie to you guys, I did try to go for it. That was going through my mind, like I'm going to try to make this, but as you can see, that didn't happen, but at least I got my count. So I'm not sure if you guys noticed this, but one little funny thing that I realized was missing was my compression sleeve. Like those first two uh, frames, I realized, uh, after the second frame, I realized, yikes, I forgot my compression sleeve. So right here, I finally put it on, 
things felt a little bit better on my arm now that I had that compression. Uh, I stuck at the foul line right there a little bit. Uh, luckily, not enough to like fall and fatally hurt myself, but uh, I fell off. Luckily, I was able to get the shot off and I managed to strike. Kind of a little strange on the form of the foul line. Went high and uh, I think that was because I got it to the right a little too early, but luckily I got that four out of there and we have another strike and now we're back to back. Much better. Very well done. That's what I want to see. That's a good shot. Nice. I like it. Very good. And I think that might be, let me see. That's four in a row, I believe. Uh, now that shot, when it traveled down the lane, I felt like I may have thrown it a little bit too slow, but as you can see, it made it there just enough. Uh, it looked like a little bit of a high hit, but you know, again, it made it there. And I told myself, all right, try not to throw it slow again. Pretty nice, I like it. Very well done, that's what I wanna see. Now, when the ball was traveling down the lane, I felt like it wasn't that great a shot. It looked like I got it a pinch left. And uh, yeah, it, it surprisingly from this angle, it, it looked like a pretty good shot. I mean, it hit the pocket the right way and blew all 10 back. All right, that one, I felt like I got it to the right the way I wanted to, but the problem there was that I got it to the right a little too early. And as a result, you could see there I left my four pin. And one thing I need to mention, and I'm kind of a little disappointed slash embarrassed about this, is uh, during practice this past week, I did I was missing a lot of four pin spares. Uh, I still got to go back and work on that. And because of that, I felt I needed to take the safest route to this four pin spare, and I did this. Hooked at it, just like I did last week. Pretty good, not bad. That one, to me, when it was traveling down the lane, looked like a good shot to me. Uh, looking at it from this angle, it may seem like I just got it straight up that 8-9 board, uh, which is technically not the right way. I mean, it made it there. It looked good, right? But uh, honestly, I feel like that's the way you use your thing on these conditions is you get it to this to the edge where there's friction, but you have to do it at the right moment. You get it a little too early, it will go through the nose or Brooklyn. You get it to the right too late, and you'll be lucky if you even get some recovery. It'll probably end up going towards the three and the six. Okay, I do believe we have already made it to the 10th frame. That felt pretty fast. But then again, look at the amount of strikes. That one was a pretty good one. Uh, my form at the foul line seemed a little funny, but you know what? Pretty good in the end. I like that. That's gotta be one of the best shots of the night right there. Good form at the foul line. Hit the pocket properly. Really good line that I played right there. 10 out of 10, I liked it. Can we strike out? Oh yeah, we can. 2.45 to end game one. Fantastic start in this little challenge. I guess that's what I want to call it. Me using urethane all night. Um, I got to say, that that was really, really well done. I'm, I'm glad that uh, the, uh, all the practice uh, was worth it in the end. I mean, what do you guys think? Uh, you think the, that this is an improvement? I mean, I'm de I definitely was not falling off on a lot of my shots. The timing seemed like it was all there. Uh, definitely uh, got my hand more up the back of it instead of on the side of it. Uh, I think that the practice has really paid off. So there we go again, game two to start. And we start things off with the strike, really nicely done. And yeah, we're still sticking with the same game plan. Pitch black, standing on board 10. Uh, I don't see anything out of the ordinary, so I see no need to change the game plan. Nice. But unfortunately, I set it up to go to a 10 pin. 
Yeah, that's one thing that I was concerned about throughout the night was how many 10 pins was I going to leave because, you know, uh, it was hard for me to tell, honestly. Even if the ball hit the pocket, it was hard for me to tell if I was going to leave a 10 pin or not. And unfortunately, I missed that one, so I had to uh, count that one as a 9 and then an open. And if you're wondering, no, I didn't cheat this one. Uh, I actually did change it on the, the, the monitor too. I, I counted that one as nine open. Even though I could have gotten away with it because like I said, this team, they, they don't really pay attention to, uh, to anything. But anyway, there we go. Back on the strike train. Yeah, I believe in playing fair, even if the other team doesn't care. Hey, that rhymes. Oh, fell off on that one a little, and unfortunately it didn't hold. So yeah, now we have a split to deal with. Again, thinking about trying to go for it. And as a result, I only ended up getting the seven. So it was actually, that split on the left lane was actually me failing to realize that the lanes were actually starting to change. And I can't remember exactly how long it took me before I realized that that was starting to happen. But I continued to stand on 10. And I think it was because of that that I thought, nah, I'm just, you know, being, you know, dumb up here. And I made the decision to stick with my game plan. But it was, uh, I should have noticed that, uh, what was going on on this left lane. That was kind of the indication that these lanes were going to start to change and that I should have started making the moves already. I mean, have a look at my score. It's an obvious indication of that. Strike, open, strike, open, strike, open. But here we go on that left lane again. That's causing me that trouble. See that? Look at that right there. The ball already wants to start picking up a little earlier. And I think it was right here, actually, where I started to realize, okay, because I, I noticed that. It became way more obvious to me now right there when the ball picked up early. Uh, that I, It made me realize, okay, I need to make a move now but how much of a move. All right, so after what happened on that left lane, I still continue to play on the 10 board on this right lane because I was thinking to myself, okay, there's no way that this right lane could possibly be doing the same thing that this left lane did. But as you could see, it did. And then I thought, okay, so now I need to make moves on both the left and the right lane. Nice to see that I could still pick up my spares on the right side, but that left side has still got me feeling a little bit, you know, doubtful about my, in my ability, you know, to be able to pick up seven, the four, uh, the two, the one, and the five, I can still do, but for some reason, that, that four and seven, I don't know why the heck I'm having so much, uh, like, so much trouble with it lately. Okay, so it was at this point where I, I, um, remembered something. I, I realized, okay, I remembered where the ball entered when it made it to the pins and I thought okay it's not that much of a move that I have to make so I thought the best guess that I could possibly make was to go to 11. So I did. Board 11 and it seemed to work out pretty nicely. Although I will say from this angle it looked like that shot was just you know straight up the boards like I shouldn't be doing because if it sits in the oil, it's not going to hook. But I did the same thing here. Board 11. That's better. That is so much better. Left. That's two left. Right there. And here we go again where I try hooking at it. Huh. You should have seen like the look on my face when I saw that ball going down there. I'm like, is that going to hook or what? I thought I was going to miss it. Anyway, last shot in the 10th. Left again. Went Brooklyn. It struck. Didn't really like it, but it is what it is. Okay, guys, so before we get this final game of the night started, I do have to mention something that I forgot to mention the entire second game. And that is uh, behind the scenes. Uh, this is what you didn't see. 
Uh, there was actually a lot of malfunctions with uh, 11 and 12, which is the pair that we were on. Uh, you know, the, the, the uh, left lane, the 10 pin was not, uh, uh, the pin setter thingy was not setting down the 10 pin. So we constantly would have to go to the counter to like tell them to put the 10 pin back because even if we hit the button to, you know, re-rack, the 10 pin would just not show up. Um, on the right lane, the ball uh, kept constantly getting stuck down in the pit, and it wouldn't bring it back. Uh, even if we hit the the button again, it just wouldn't bring the ball back to the ball return. Um, sometimes the monitor wasn't calculating the right score. Like I would get like nine spare, and it would say eight spare, and I would have to correct it. So many things were going on uh, with that pair. So they decided, uh, you know what? Enough of this. We're gonna let you guys finish what you're doing on game two, and then when uh, at the start of game three, we're gonna move you to nine and ten, which is one pair over. So that's what they did. They moved us to nine and ten, which meant I have fresh lanes again because on this pair. There were only two people bowling on it because uh, for, uh, one team, the entire team did not show up. And then on the other team, only two of the four people showed up. So only two people were bowling on this pair. So it was still pretty fresh. So uh, I knew from that and based off of what those two people were throwing and how they were playing the lanes, I thought to myself, okay, well, this means that I can move back to board 10 because I'll know I have that fresh right side again. So here we go to start off game three, back on uh, board 10 again. <laughs> well, how about that? Back to our old game plan. And it was still working out nicely. Okay, left lane, two in a row to start. Can we make it three? I like it. Oh, I really like it. Fell off at the foul line a little bit there because I tried to put some extra juice on it, but as you can see, it worked out and we are now on the front four. That's a nice one. But unfortunately, you could see the way it traveled down the lane. That, that that's like an obvious. Uh, that's a, that's way too obvious that it was going to leave a tent pin. It just seemed way too direct to the pocket. Will I miss it? Will I make it? Fell off a little bit, but I made it. Nice delivery, but unfortunately, it went high. Uh, from what I wrote down, it says I got it to the right a little too early, and it kind of seemed that way, so it makes sense that we leave another four pin. I left a lot of four pins last week, and it seems like that's what I'm doing this week as well. That has to be another great shot, probably the second best one of the night. I can't tell which one was better. All right, so a part of me was kind of glad that we were off that pair uh, 11 and 12 because of all the malfunctions that were going on. But the part of me that was not uh, glad about it was the fact that uh, we were on a fresh pair because uh, I wanted to know what it was like to deal with the lanes changing using your thing. And now I wasn't going to be able to do that because we were on this fresh pair. And that went right through the nose, and luckily I struck. Got to take him any way I could get him at this point. But yeah, uh, I know that sounds a little strange, but you know, uh, I want to be able to know what it's like to do that, especially in league, to see how I handle it and to gain that experience. You know what I mean? Um, uh, and now because of that, uh, I mean, the only thing I can really say is uh, at least I know what it's like. Uh, to be able to use urethane for three games on a league night, uh, I'd say I'm handling it pretty well, but uh, I really wanted to know what that was like, to be able to uh, use urethane and then uh, try to deal with the lanes changing and see how well I could deal with it. And even if I do bad at it, at least I gain some experience in that. So I know how to do it better the next time it happens. And I know some of you will probably be like, well, Frank, you could just do that in practice. True, 
but you guys know the feeling of being in practice is completely different from the feeling of being in league. That ball was starting to pick up a little bit early there. I saw that. And yeah, you saw me like go like that. because I was mad because like I'm like, great, another stinking four pin. I'm getting sick of seeing these. There you go. Pick it up and move on. That one, I got it. I don't know, I felt like the, uh, I got it to the right at the right moment, but the friction level right there was just a little bit too much, and as a result, the ball went through the nose, and now I have a split, and that just ruined things, and that, that really irritated me because I had a chance to not only get the win for our team, but I just like totally blew my chance to make this game even higher than... Uh, than it should be. I mean, 220 is still really, really good. And then uh, we managed another 600 series using urethane. I'd say that's mission accomplished right there. Uh, but you know, you know that feeling when you know you could have done better, but you didn't do it, and you just totally blew it. I had that right there, that opportunity, and I just totally blew it by getting that split in the tent. But you know, it's not all that bad because we did get a 220. And I believe that is 636. So I say pretty good. Uh, now we know what it's like for me to use urethane three games on league. Uh, I am pretty happy about it. I thought it'd be pretty bad. Uh, I thought I'd fall off on a lot of my shots. Uh, I thought that my release would be pretty bad. Uh, I thought that those scores would be pretty ugly too, but uh, I'd say this is uh, far beyond my expectations because uh, you know, I never really had a solid practice with urethane until I made that fast pitch and pitch black video. And then I gained a really good solid understanding of what it's like uh, to use uh, these kinds of bowling balls. And um, of course, I, 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 would, uh, I told myself one of these days I'm going to take these things to league and I'm going to use it so that I know what it's like. And now I know, and I think that I could totally do this again if um, if I was going to do it again. Okay, you guys, so let's now take a look at the numbers for week five. Um, so for game one, obviously, we started off with the bang, 245, and then unfortunately, game two uh, got a 171, partly because of how the lane started to change, and I failed to notice it right away, uh, and I didn't make the change until like probably... I want to say just past the middle part of the game, probably like frame six or seven, I can't remember. And also, uh, th this is probably me just making an excuse, but the fact that, um, and this is something you guys didn't see because like I said, it was happening behind the scenes, but all the lane, uh, uh, all the lane malfunctions that were going on, um, it had us waiting for a long time in between shots. Like literally uh, that one uh, part where, um, the left lane was failing to put uh, the pin setter was failing to put down the 10 pin we would have to wait like five or ten minutes between each shot because it kept happening uh the ball not coming back to the ball return i don't know why that was taking forever but uh it it was like we were waiting we, we were waiting like uh quite a number of minutes between each shot because of all these malfunctions and all that waiting did kind of screw with my head as much as i hate to say that because you know it sounds like an excuse but it, it did get to my head and it uh, affected me a little bit and um, yeah though I feel like that's why that 171 came about because I failed to make the moves when uh, because I wasn't paying attention to what was going on when the ball was rolling down the lane if I had noticed that I would have known to make the move and the score would probably have been higher and then the uh, um, you know those uh, lane malfunctions got to my head as well all the waiting uh, it got to me. And then, uh, luckily, uh, they moved us to a new pair, and uh, game three, we managed to salvage it, and we got 220, and we got a 636 to end it, our second 600 series in a row in this league. I'd say that's pretty huge, considering how challenging it is now, uh, compared to last week's series total being 613, so an obvious improvement. Um, the series required to raise the average was 594, obviously we did that. And now the pin total after week five is 2,952. 
After 15 games played, that brings our average up from last week, which was 193. So we went up a few points, 196.8. So we're getting that much closer to getting back into the 200 club. And uh, it'll definitely be interesting to see uh, those top five averages that I showed you guys. Uh, It'll be interesting to see how that uh, changes now after this week, but I don't know what they are, so I'm just going to have to wait for the paper uh, to see uh, how that changed. And uh, yeah, uh, I'll definitely uh, get that out to you guys. And then uh, for the highest game, it remains the 256 uh, with the Zen Master back in week one. Uh, haven't been able to top that. I was pretty close, obviously, tonight with that 245, but couldn't do it. And then uh, highest series is now that 636 that I just did, up from that 613. Very, very nice. And we continue to climb. Uh, but anyway, that is it for week number five. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, that. Uh, I'm uh, Frank the Tank. I will see you guys for week number six.